The Profile Manager is a Cubase Pro only feature, but it's one of those features that's gonna save you a lot of time when it comes to backing up and exporting a bunch of different settings. So let's have a look at some of the things we can export with the Profile Manager. So the Profile Manager allows us to export our preferences, our toolbar settings for all windows, export our global workspaces, track control settings, track control presets, presets for input and output buses, plugin collections, quantize presets, crossfade presets, and our key commands. So there's a lot of things that we can export into a single SRV file, which we can re-import in if we've just you know, set up a new machine with Cubase on and we wanna copy our settings over very quickly. Now, another really useful thing about the Profile Manager is if you go to Edit and open up the Profile Manager box here, you'll notice that for most of you, it'll be set to default, okay? So it's the default profile. Now let's imagine that we have a couple of people working for us. We have Bill and Ben, and Bill likes his key commands set up completely differently to Ben and me. And Ben likes his main edit windows and preferences and workspaces set up completely different to me and Bill. What we can actually do is create a profile for each user. So if you went to new and say, okay, this is gonna be Bill's profile, and this is gonna be Ben's profile. Every time Bill or Ben want to work on a project in Cubase, what they can actually do is open up the profile manager, select their profile and activate it. And this means any settings that they do, if they change the key commands or the window layouts or anything, it'll all be tied to their profile. And then when they close things down, it will remember those settings for their profile. So then when I want to work on something or if Ben wants to work on it, I can simply load up the profile manager, select my profile, activate it, and I can securely know that all of my settings would have been unchanged and I can carry on working as I like to work. And this also allows you to export each profile as well. So if you've got multiple users, you can export all their profiles and re-import them back in on the other Cubase uh, that you've set up. And it just means a seamless transition for a lot of the presets and settings. Now it's important to note that with the profile manager there are a couple of things that do not get copied over so we will need to manually back these up. So the following is not included in profiles. Settings in the device setup, VST connections window, presets in the studio tab for the VST connections window, track presets, plugin presets, and project templates. Now, the majority of these we can easily back up by copying them over. So let's go ahead and do that. First, let's start by backing up our template files. The quickest way to do this in Cubase is by going to file, new project, and opening up the Steinberg hub. At the top, we have the different tabs for our recent project, and we also have tabs for the included templates, which are bundled with Cubase. However, if you've created your own unique templates and setups, they'll be listed under the More tab. Now, in order for us to access the location of where these templates are stored so we can back them up, we need to just right click on one of these templates and go to Show in Explorer. This will take us exactly to the location of where our templates are stored. So if I just back up out of this folder, it'll also take us to the main root directory for where most of the settings we'll be backing up are also stored as well. This can be found under C, Users, Your Username, App Data, Roaming, Steinberg, then your current version of Cubase that you're using. So first, let's start by backing up our project templates. I'm going to create an empty folder on the desktop just by right clicking and we'll close the hub for now. I'm going to rename this Cubase Backup. I'm simply going to copy over the files to this location. Now, when you're backing up stuff ready to import on a different version of Cubase, it's very important to note the location of where you've backed up those files from, because when we're importing them, we're basically going to be the, doing the exact reverse of what we're doing now and copying those files back to these locations. Next on our list is preferences. Preferences can be found under the edit toolbar and then by going to preferences. Any changes that we've made here, we need to make sure we've stored them as a preference preset. 
So after you've set up the look of Cubase and how you want certain things to function, we need to store that. So simply go to store at the bottom and give it a name. Uh, you can call it video. Well, I'm going to call it video. You can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it video one and click OK. Um, oh, I've already got one called video one. I'll just overwrite that. Um, and then we'll go to OK as well at the bottom here. Now that we've exported that setting, Cubase would have created the correct XML file inside of uh, the preset folder for this. So to get to that folder, we are navigating to the, the root directory, as I mentioned earlier, and we're going to go to our presets folder. And then under configurations, you'll find that your preferences have been exported to this location. So again, we need to make note of where this is on our system so we know where to copy this file back over to. So I'm gonna copy this into our folder. In fact, we could even put a little name next to it, um, vid1config, so we don't forget where it is. I'm gonna copy that back there, and that's that done. Key commands are again a very similar approach you need to make sure you've stored your key commands first so go to edit and then key commands if you've already got everything set up you just need to make sure you save them as a preset okay uh, so i've already stored mine already um, just to save some time and well obviously i've got mine stored already but to find them we need to go back to the root folder we need to go into the presets folder and then go to the key commands folder and you'll see that your key commands are saved there. So I've got my Marcus key commands and I'm going to copy them to my backup folder. The next thing we're going to be backing up is our effects chain presets. Now effects chain presets are basically when you have a bunch of plugins on the track and you like the sound and you save that chain of effects plugins as a preset. Now, the quickest way to back these up is by literally clicking on the select presets box next to the inserts, going to save effects chain presets, and then just right clicking on one of your presets you've already saved in the past, and then go to show in Explorer. This will open the location of where all of your effects chain presets have been saved that you've custom made. And all we simply do is navigate out of that folder a couple of times so we can see the effects chain preset folder and then copy this to our backup folder like so. It's important to note that the effects chain presets are stored in a different location to the other files that we've been backing up. Usually you'll find in your My Documents there'll be a Steinberg folder and inside the Steinberg folder you'll find things for your effects chain presets. Next on the list is our plugin collections. Now the plugin collections are not the actual VST plugins. A plugin collection is this. If you go to Studio and go to VST Plugin Manager, you'll notice that you have a couple of folders on the right and you can actually customize how you want this to look. You know, you can create your own custom folders and drag and drop all your plugins into them uh, to suit your preferences. Or usually most people just leave it on the default and, you know, they navigate through things like this. If you have created a custom preference, we need to copy that over. And to do that is very, very simple again. So go back to the file browser inside of Windows. Go to your C drive, go to users, your username, and you'll see a folder called app data. If this is not showing, by the way, you need to check hidden items on the view bar. And then from there, we go to roaming and then to Steinberg and then select the version of Cubase that we're working on. So I'm using 10.5 and this will take us back to that root directory we were looking at earlier. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see an XML file called Plugin Manager. And again, make a note of where you've copied this from so you know where to copy it back to on the other Cubase that you freshly installed on a new machine or on your own machine. So we're going to copy that over to our folder and hey presto, there we go. We now have copied all of our plugin manager settings.
Now, a couple of other notable things you might want to back up are your project logical editor presets, if you've created any, and also things like track presets. So let's take a look at those now. Now, a couple of other notable things you might want to back up are your project logical editor presets, if you've created any, and also things like track presets. So let's take a look at those now. I'm going to open up that session and I'm going to open up the project logical editor. Now, if you've created and saved any of your own scripted settings, what I would advise you do is once you've stored the preset, let's create one, for example, here, I'm just going to just randomly click some things and I'm going to save this as, I don't know, uh, M1. So what we need to do is go back to our folder that we have open here where we're in the root directory, go to the presets folder and then down here there'll be one for project logical editor and if we open this up you'll see that i've got a couple of my things saved here and that one we just created m1 is there so again if we want to back back up the project logical editor settings we could just literally copy it copy this entire folder like so and then copy it back in later on when we are re-importing things finally we want to back up our track presets and some of the other little files you may have created and saved on your machine so to navigate to those we need to open up the Cubase session here, expand the right zone, click the home icon, and then we'll go to user presets. Um, I'll use track presets, and then we can go to multi. I know I've got a couple of multis saved here. So I can right click on one of my multis and go to show in Explorer. And Cubase will open up the location of where obviously those are stored. But if you back up out of the folder um, twice, you'll notice that it takes you here, which isn't the root directory for the Cubase version. But before that, it's in the Steinberg folder. And you'll see if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll have something called track presets. So any audio track presets, instrument track presets, MIDI, multis, and samplers all get stored in these folders. So what we can actually do is copy this to our backup folder here and make a note of where this was in the directory and then copy this back over. And what this will effectively let us do is copy all of our track presets and other little settings so we don't have to worry about losing them if you open up a project and you go and say if you're doing modular template building i know i normally have a lot of orchestral stuff but uh, i need to re-import them because i've obviously reinstalled my machine at some point um they'd all be you know you'd all drag that folder into that directory and then when you load up cubase you can navigate to your usual sort of like multi settings and they're all going to be there now there might be a couple other things you can copy over but um for me i just use the profile manager being a cubase pro user so it, some of these things here uh, i'm not sure where you would find them in the directory to copy maybe you can have a look around and experiment yourself on that um but having said that that is pretty much how you go about backing up the majority of your settings with Cubase. So hopefully you found this video useful. Um, if you have any questions, obviously leave them in the comments box below. I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget, I'm only human. I don't know everything about everything, so don't expect me to have all of the answers like an oracle, um, but I'll try my best to answer most of the questions that you guys uh, provide me. And hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down. And if you want to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon thing if you want to stay updated. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.